All right, everybody, let's take a look at some things that followed me home over the weekend. Uh, now, right off the bat, I'm going to warn, don't follow the price tags on this stuff because it was the last day of the sale and I only ended up paying 20 bucks for all this stuff. So I made away pretty good with that. And in this video, we're just kind of be, we're, we're going to be going over everything. We're not going to be, you know, repairing anything. We're just, we're just testing today. I always enjoy doing these videos because I, I just like looking at stuff, seeing how things work, that kind of stuff. And I think we'll have some pretty interesting items on the bench today. I think this is the first time in a while that I've had multiple items on the bench and they've all been made in USA Electronics, you know, the older stuff. So that'll be, that'll be neat to go through. And starting off first on the list is this right here. General Electric All Transistor TR-805 TV set. Just a little pluggable, portable TV. It's got UHF on it, which is nice. I believe this is a 1965. This is your VHF tuner your fine tuning knob there. Vertical, horizontal, brightness, contrast. This is just a little black and white TV. It's got an antenna. It actually goes up pretty darn high. This was listed for $5, but it ended up being free. That was kind of a nice little score. General Electric Television, model number, only 30 watts, that's not bad, at least for this era. Manufactured in the United States using some selected imported components. I'm very excited to dig into this. What kind of power cord we've got here. It's kind of a weird little pinout type. Now you can throw a battery on here or a battery pack on this for 12 volts. DC 12 watts. It's kind of interesting. And of course there is our external antenna inputs. My plan for this TV, if we can get it to work well, is uh, to watch the U.S. presidential election on it. It's kind of just a rude awakening for this poor TV, but yeah. Like I said, I think it's uh, about a 1965 or so. Let's take the back off. It actually does require quite a bit of disassembly to take it apart because it slides out from the front. I was trying to pry at the back for so long and then I realized this was just kind of flopping around up here. You gotta take the knobs off. So let's see if I can get into this now. And it did take some sort of impact at one point in time. I noticed that before I bought it though, so no disappointment there. Okay, here we are. Mm, yes, I love my weed whacker sound effects. It's got a nice little speaker on it. The Bendix? The date stamp of second week of 65. I don't know who makes that one down there, but Bendix, that's pretty, that's pretty cool. That's who made the fridge in that mobile home. The fridge was a Bendix. I don't really like that. Right there, that black stuff. But, eh, whatever. Another date stamp of 66, 17. So I guess this one's a 1966. There's a date stamp on that one of 52nd week of 65. There's 47th week of 65. There's one thing to know about me is that I'm very good with date stamps and trying to weed them out and find out what they mean. There's another early one though, uh, uh, third week of 65 on that big capacitor. Like, it is a really weird 
mix of US and Japanese made parts. 6.5 microfarads at 150 volts. We have a replacement for that, so if we need it. All in all, a very nice little compact TV thing to note up here is that there's actually a sticker over the you know normal CRT sticker. Yes, weed whacker. I love my weed whacker. Looks like most of our transistors are that type right there though, which is kind of cool. It's got the newer type of transistor on it. Not germanium and, oh, it does have early silicon types. See that thing with the orange paint on top? That's a, that's a dome capacitor, though we don't like those ones here. What we do like is these old Bendix ones right here. Those are pretty cool. Let's throw it together and throw some power on it. See what it does. Might give us a cool little light show. This is how that spring mechanism works. It's got a leaf spring on it, which is kind of cool. Okay, we're all put back together. Now, power cord here. that in. Time for some party lights. Oh, somebody's home. Hey, that thing works. UHF. It's got one of those kind of cool little geared knobs. It's brightness. Contrast. Cool. Thing works. Not bad for a free little TV set. Oh, that's rad. That's a rad shutdown. Next. All right. RCA Victor. Solid state with the little transistor symbol there, or emblem. It's not really symbol. Dual speaker radio from, I believe, 1966. So the same year as that TV, and they're from pretty much the same company because of RCA and GE's ties to one another. And I gotta admit, I actually got this yesterday before filming. The other items I got today, this was from yesterday at a different sale. Um, and I got this home right away and I just, I just worked on it and I already know that it works now. So it's just, we're still gonna plug it up and see if it explodes a day later, but There is another video on this. I filmed it yesterday of the actual repair of this radio. It does have a weird inconsistency problem. Like, watch this. Cold solder joint somewhere. I just need to go through it and find it and fix it. But. Other than that, it works. And this is a model. RHA39W with the walnut finish on it. Uh, and you can tell this was, you know, still a tube era radio because of this lockout plug on it. Can't pull it out. Uh, this is a 1966. I think originally in the video I thought it was a 64. Uh, 
but turns out this one's a 66 and this model came out in 65 just like our little GE TV down there next what is this you may be asking well this is a Heath kit model GC 1107 clock radio that would have come as a kit that you'd build just for funsies this is not a clock radio. This is just a, a digital clock. This is not a clock radio. Uh, these were pretty common among electronic enthusiasts. They made them for quite a few years. Uh, I don't know if this is from the 70s, the 80s, or heck, even the 90s. I, I don't know. But. I don't even know if it works. It was only 25 cents. 3.5 watts. I don't know what these switches do back here. Or anything like that. But we'll find out. Uh, let's see if it does anything. Dead. Finagle with it a little bit. Well, we might be dead here, but 25 cents. I mean, use it for parts if nothing else, or just try to repair it. I don't know. Low risk, high reward. This is the kind of thing that I don't really see myself keeping for too long, even if I do fix it. Probably sell it at my online store, but kind of cool nonetheless. Probably made right here in town. I bought it from the original owner. Heath Company, Benton Harbor, Michigan. Next. Holy barb, what do we got here? Well... Here we have RCA Radiola 18 from 1928. This is a, I forget what they call these things. I think they call them casket radios because they open up like that and they're all wood. It's got a really cool on and off switch on it. Our tuning dial still works perfect. That string has been tied in a knot for 96 years. It is a little rough on the actual dial itself, but I could probably try to clean that. And of course over here is our volume. That's right, it's not on-off volume, it's just a volume slider. I don't know why they have it like this. Uh, I guess so you can replace the tubes without having to, you know, disassemble everything. Turn that tuning knob. You can see the banana slicer is indeed slicing. Look at that 1920s wiring. We are missing one tube. A UX 280. I know it says 2801, but that's a 280. Um, Antenna and ground cables, that's what these two are. We have a UX-171A, a UX-226, a Type 27, UX-226, 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 and then of course the UX-280. It's our big power supply in here. And here's who made the case. It was made by R. Prescott and Sons. Um, in, what is that, Keens, Keensville, New York. Very cool. So the wood cabinet was made separate. Check out that volume knob. 
everything is just so mechanical on these 20s radios. This is, I think, the first model to run off of wall power instead of a battery. That's right, battery operated radios are way older than the ones that you plug into the wall. That of course being because not a lot of homes had electricity back in 1928, including the one that you see in the background. Coming around to this side, you can see that we have a Raytheon. Is that an, oh, that's an RCA. Cunningham. Licensed by RCA? I, I don't know. Radiotron. <laughs> have a National Union. Another Radiotron by RCA. And then we got two Zeniths there. And these tubes aren't too expensive. They're pretty expensive for a tube, but it's not going to break the bank or anything. It's like, it's like 30 bucks or whatever. Power cord has seen better days. Not that I'd use the original one anyway, but it is a Paramount. No, not that Paramount. Different Paramount. Looks like it's had some spliceomatic action. Sometime over the years. These are our speaker connections. They kind of slide in there. This would take a thousand ohm speaker, um, which I don't have, but I think I could make a thousand ohm speaker. This is our voltage selector between a 20 volt and 110 volts. Very cool. And this is going to be new territory for me, and we will see this in an upcoming video. Not a whole lot of capacitors in these, so it'll be neat to see what's wrong with it. But yeah, very cool. Very cool 20s radio. Been wanting one of these from the 20s. My next newest one is uh, 1931 which is still really old but I don't know these 20s sets are really cool to me and that one the one from 1931 is not you know AC power that one you need to run it off of you know something else's power you could run it off of this thing I think that's what it was built for what it is the one from 1931 is it puts shortwave on a radio that didn't have shortwave uh, and you just loop its power cords into the B plus of a radio like this so then it can get its power just kind of you know taps into that steals its power but yeah overall for a 100 year old piece of audio equipment it's in real good shape you know it's got scuffs but it's not rotten, doesn't look like it spent a day outside. Seems like it's had a roof over its head its own entire life. We are unfortunately missing the little hood that goes over the dial lamp, but that's pretty common, even on ones that are in super good condition. Here's that sticker that the radio was referring to. It's still there, but it's not in great shape. However, the bottom is in really good shape. It still has all four felt pads on it. Wow. Model AR936, RCA Radiola, range 55 for 550 to 1400 kilo cycles. And then a little notice from RCA and some patent numbers and caution thing wow a caution sign from the 20s <laughs> so we've got a uh, dad and son here the big rca and then the little rca these two are only about 40 years apart when you think about it which is crazy you know about 1926 and about 19 66 or 1966 and then you know 1928 so about about 40 years apart 
crazy to think about. That's how long we've come. All right, and with that, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. We will have a video on all of these eventually. I'm just kind of sitting here after the fact, thinking about all the stuff that has probably gone through this radio. Uh, I was looking at the tubes, and it looks like those Zeniths are from 1939. So this had a pretty long life. And I guess Calvin Coolidge would have been president in 1928, which is crazy to think about. The election of 1928 was probably one of the first broadcasts you know first big broadcasts over this and then eventually the great depression you know only a few months later weird to think about double side note here plugging this in inside it does work so yeah must have just been too bright outside to see it